Elon Musk continues to surprise us with his astounding technological developments as the days are going by. This time, he has revealed how his company SpaceX is gonna land a rocket by catching it mid-air. We'll give you an insight on the Starship and its super heavy landing trick that will revolutionize the industry and will save SpaceX a lot of millions by saving crafts. Stay until the end so you can see how. Detailed data has been provided by Elon Musk about the final landing burn and not just only the movement from directly above the Mechazilla. The striking feature that you might find exciting is the fact that it is located 1800 meters above Mechazilla. A comparison between a Super Heavy and a Falcon 9 booster shows that the point at which the Falcon 9 booster starts the re-entry burn is also 1800 meters, the same for Super Heavy. Some could even say that the Super Heavy is another variant form of Falcon 9 booster with the booster coming at an angle. The utility of the angle lies in the fact that it would come in handy when SpaceX will perform a dogleg maneuver to protect the orbital launch mount and Mechazilla in case something untoward happens during the early phases of the launch. The angle also provides a much needed lift from the booster's body that would facilitate a smooth and a slow descent. This tells us a lot about what SpaceX is planning to do with this Super Heavy and it looks like they are going to follow what they already are doing with the Falcon 9 boosters. The booster, after reaching a height of 800 to 700 meters above the pad, switches to using only three center engines coming down from an initial count of 13. This move creates a massive bump in the body acceleration graph but poses a small challenge to the entire machinery. If you notice, there has been a shutdown of certain engines which means that the TVC of the remaining three engines has to fight to keep the booster on track. Irrespective of whether a rocket is going up or down, whenever there is a loss of engines which means a shutdown of the initial number of engines, the remaining have to compensate for the sudden change in the thrust vector control also known as engine gimbal. This method is common for all the high altitude Starship flight tests to date. Starships with their Raptor engines have avionics and TVC hydraulic mechanisms in place that make it possible for the spaceship to perform this in flight with relative ease. At this point, the booster becomes so slow that it is difficult for it to produce any meaningful lift and thus undergoes necessary changes too. In other words, the booster is programmed to turn its engine sections straight downwards while positioning itself above the Mechazilla. Also, the loss of all those engines means a drop in the velocity until it makes the final approach to position itself at the center of the Mechazilla chopsticks with the grid fins pointing left and right. An immaculate and detailed animated video was recently released by Ryan Hansen Space regarding this where he worked closely with O, a member of SpaceX 3D Creation Eccentric. The video showed us how the lifting booster 4 onto the orbital launch mount will be carried out by SpaceX and how the Mechazilla chopsticks will play a crucial role in this. This animation provides an incomparable demonstration of the mechanics of the chopstick, in which it has been elaborated that the chopsticks work the same way in both liftings or catching a booster. In other words, while the booster will either get ready to get lifted or land, they will come to do so on the chopsticks with little arm or anchor-like projections. These anchors are positioned in the middle of and directly under the grid fins we talked about that are present on either side of the booster's hull. Thus, you can understand that it is of utmost importance that the grid fins are oriented towards the chopsticks while the booster is coming down. What are your thoughts on how safe and feasible this process is? Let us know in the comment section below and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, well, what are you waiting for? We promise to come up with quality content and for that, you need to press the bell icon to get notified about the same. Jumping back to the matter of landing, one important question that experts have raised at this point is if SpaceX can pull off a controlled rotational movement on the boosters in descent. In uninterrupted footage where a Falcon 9 is seen to make the descent from space to LZ-1 at Kennedy Space Center, it was noted that the entire process of the rotational movement happening just meters above the pad was very much under control. The booster has seen to rotate back and forth just before reaching the final meters when it stops rotating altogether. All thanks to the grid fins that make controlling the rotational movement much easier than before. Thus, in theory, super heavy with the same kind of mechanics, we can expect the same kind of technology will be at work there too. Just to remain extra safe, Mechazilla has preventive measures in place if the booster is not positioned perfectly. It can rotate a few degrees of deviation from the rotational axis. In another animated video by O from SpaceX 3D Creation Eccentric, the working of this safety has been demonstrated. 
The video shows us certain pushers close in on the boosters after the catch which then guides it to the correct center position of the chopsticks, thus the boosters positioned on the orbital mount launch correctly. They say experience makes you wise and SpaceX with 101 landings of an orbit class rocket booster has all the experience in the world they need to make this happen. Thus, this is one big advantage that SpaceX inherently has over any other space research center in the world. Another interesting thing found out about the lifting and launching is that the Mechazilla chopsticks don't need to move much up or down while catching the booster. One of the first reasons behind this is the enormous size of Mechazilla, which is the orbital launch tower, and the weight of each chopstick is estimated to be 100 tons. The second and the most important reason is that the Falcon 9 doesn't need the drone ship to have any kind of dampening apart from the already present honeycomb crush blocks present inside the legs of the rocket. But in comparison, there are no legs when it comes to a super heavy and thus the question of having honeycomb crush blocks to dampen the vertical descent goes out of the window. Instead, what the Super Heavy has are movable bars that work as landing surfaces for the booster. These bars can move up and down to achieve the distance to dampen the descent that a Falcon 9 does with the help of its crushed legs. Though this distance is just a few centimeters theory, it is very crucial to a smooth and a soft landing. And the softer the landing, the better is the success of the spaceship. Coming to the last part of how the booster catch is going to take place, we need to address the 5 second land hoovering Super Heavy does before finally making the landing. This is in contrast to a suicide burn landing that people are used to seeing with the Falcon 9. The suicide burn is a technique used to achieve zero velocity on every Falcon 9 booster. There are two reasons why SpaceX has stuck with this mode of landing when it comes to the Falcon 9 series. The first being the consumption of a minimum amount of fuel in a suicide burn landing. Secondly, the engine of the Falcon 9 booster is Merlin 1D, which has too much thrust and cannot throttle down enough. The booster, before it lands, is very light due to almost empty tanks, thus making it impossible to hover, and if they manage to do this, there would be continued loss of fuel further. Thus, the spaceship would come to a standstill and then start ascending again. As the name suggests, the Super Heavy booster outweighs the Falcon 9 booster even when its tanks are almost empty. The minimum throttle range of the Raptor engine a Super Heavy has is 10% of the total thrust developed by it. Elon Musk has made us aware that the value of his thrust is around 220 tons when a chamber pressure of 300 bar is present. Thus, the requisites for hovering are facilitated by a Super Heavy and SpaceX intends to use it to their advantage and provide a soft landing to the spaceship. From all this discussion, one very pronounced thing is the determination of SpaceX to excel with their Super Heavy spaceship. They are going above and beyond to make the lifting and landing of this spaceship as flawless as possible. But why do they even want to venture into uncharted territory with so many risks? Surely, landing a spaceship with legs would be much easier. But then again, SpaceX aims to achieve full and rapid reusability with their rockets, and this is how they're going to make it happen. Be sure to check out your favorite SpaceX video here.